okay. Interesting. Well, I'm a little excited because I got one box in the in the mail. Just starting to get moving again, friends. I got all my boxes. I got my handles. Now, friends, you see that? See the grain in some of these? Okay, friends, uh, again, and look here, like th this first box was, I think he separated, like there's little knots now and again in here and there. There's another little, like, like here, I'll show you. For instance, let's put this here. See, like the grain is a bit haywire on some morning, of these. Good morning, good morning. Hi everybody, welcome. If you're new here, I'm Buck and Billy Ray. Welcome to the channel. I'm glad you're here. And to all my dear friends and true blues that have been here for since day one, or five, or six, or seven, or four, or three, or however long you've been here, welcome. Um, finally, we have pretty much, we're almost set up to box and sell out some handles that I made by hand. This is my, this is a handle that I made from what you are gonna hear in, in, my inspiration has come from many different handles. The C30, uh, Jonesy's helped me with this. Uh, uh, the Whiskey River Group, uh, Brandon, which is the C30. Um, all kinds of different things through the years have kind of brought me to the point of what I like in a handle. Um, and, and, and most of it is, is down below. I'll be quite frank, it is, is where the hands spend all the time right? For me, that, that's super important. For instance, friends, for instance, the Fiskars X27, I think they call it. I'm sure there's about 30 people right now watching this video that own one of those axes. What does it have at the palm swell? It has a hook, an actual, like a, a literal hook at the bottom, way more pronounced than this. It actually goes whoop, See, here's just a couple images from YouTube. Just, you, you know the handle I'm talking about, right? This is a Fiskars. They know what they're doing. There's another image. Fiskars has a straight handle, but you see that? That is pronounced. So that your pinky or wherever you stop, so it doesn't leave your hands, okay? So the most important part to me to an axe handle it is the palm swell is the bottom part of the handle it's just it's just me it's just where i live so and i think you'll you'll, you'll find if you if you talk to most axemen uh competition axemen who are swinging those big heavy headed axes you, you'll probably find the same idea uh geometry is important it, it is it's very important but the palm swells quite important. So enough of that. We're talking about wood right now. I got a, uh, a box of handles that came with the other two that I just showed on the tailgate. This one showed up and it looks like Eli. And I talked to Eli about this. I said, Eli, listen, bud, I'm not going to ask you to go through and pick out all the premium because you know what I would have ended up with friends, not them boxes. I would ended up with one box about 40 handles probably, maybe, I don't know. But I'm not, I'm not doing that, friends. I'm not going down the road of premium ax handles because if you get an ax handle from me and it's not dead square up the freaking thing and it's just the, the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life and you're gonna get a hold of me and say, Buckin', this isn't good enough for me, guess what? I'm not going down that road. I'm not doing it. I'm selling my axe handles the way they come. I will go through them, each individual handle. I'm going through them. I've, I've probably got to put some time in them because they 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 come off of the uh, off the lathe. There is, you know, you know, if you look very closely, you will see if, to just pick it up and go, whoa, that's nice. That, but if you really inspect, you, you can see that it's wood. So I'm going to go through them all. Um, I think, so the reasoning behind this is friends is I think what I'll do is that the handles with the neat defect and the neat little stuff that, that I, and the, the grain, 
I'm going to show you some of this stuff, but I'm, I'm not going to cast those away and I am going to sell them. I'm going to stamp them with the genuine buck and get the gullet. I, I think that's what I'm going to do. I really like that stamp, friends. You know, the round, it's nice. Um, and I will sell them. I will sell them. They might be very nice for wall hangers, friends, or something like that. You can use it too. Uh, if you know what you're doing, swinging an ax, we know that we work within the confines of what we have in our hands and what we're hitting, right? So, um, this is all individual experience stuff. So we're going to go into the video now, but I just, I want to do a video on this, but we got our wood stove roasting. The wood sheds are looking good. And I'm feeling good. I'm feeling physically good, mentally and spiritually. I got a few things that are been on me a bit, but they're 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 coming they're coming out. Everything's kind of working itself out. We're gonna be swinging an axe again soon. Liam Hoffman and the Wood Bullet. An update on that. Whoa, 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 whoa! I'm excited. It's actually happening. People are gonna have the chance to purchase the Wood Bullet. There's a. a so I sent the handle to Liam, him and I, and I know I've talked about this, but I'm just gonna touch on it again. I sent the handle to Liam, he, he called me and said there's a couple issues with it, and we agreed that yes, let's tweak this a bit, and we did all that, kind of like that finger. We tweaked it a little bit. So that's done. He's actually, I believe he's in the process of, of copying them now. He's, we're, we're friends, we're getting close with the wood bullet. We're getting close and I'm excited. I've rambled enough, let's get into the video. You know, here's 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 one here that actually has a, but you know what, friends? I I, I got to be honest. Um, like, look at the grain. That is an absolutely well. Count them up. Can you count those up? Think about this for just a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20, 20, 30, 30, 40, 50, 60, 60. Friends, that is a 70 year old piece of wood right there. I'm not joking. I'm gonna get my glasses out. Friends, look at how many girls. So anyways, you get me. So there's a little sanding to be done. You can see a little hump there. I think that part of his program, they all seem to have a little hump, right? Who knows, right? But that's easily done by that guy right there, a couple of strokes, and she's slickety, slickety schluck. Okay, is it any different than this? Not really. It's hard as a rock. So, is it a defect? Absolutely it is. But I just think with proper axemanship, this is actually a wicked handle. You see these friends? You see what's, this is just heartwood. That's what that is, that's heartwood. I don't know. This is not going to be, friends, this is not going to be a premium handle uh, sales uh, program. It's just not. I designed this handle. Uh, it is designed for, it's kind of an interesting handle. It has, some, I wouldn't, well, I guess you could say hook, but not much, or uh, curve. It's a curvy handle, but not really curvy. Uh, we've, we've actually hafted a couple axes uh, with this handle, but we're getting into some dandies here now. I can, I can guarantee you that, skis. I might even do this, friends. Boop. Yeah, I think this is better. I like this. Now. This is really interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. That's about a 60 year old handle right there. Right there. I, I really like this, this handle, how it's got a belly here. Look at, can you guys see this? It's got a belly, so it's, but, but look what happens when it sits on its, on its heel, right? Look, here. You see what I mean? You see where the curve is? This ends up pretty, well, here. 
So, so here, here's, here's the axe. There's the Hoffman axe. But what we did, friends, just so you know, just for, for, for everybody purposes, worldly purposes, we took a little bit out of here, friends. And if you can imagine, we just took not the bottom half, friends, not, not this. This is all where the magic happens in my mind right there. That's, that's magical. It's, it's this, what we did here is we brought this forward a little teeny bit, approximately half inch, perhaps, maybe three quarters, max. That's not much, but what it does is it changes this a little bit. So, so here's what an ax is supposed to do when you put it flat. This is what an ax is supposed to do, there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you actually. I'm gonna turn the camera and you can look at all your ax books and this and that and it's just, it's just things for reference, friends. That's all they are is things for reference. What an ax is supposed to do when you lay it on a flat surface, they say, but not every human being is the same. Not everybody uses a chopping block. Not everybody uses or splits on the ground. So it's all relative, it's all difference. And I like an ax that, see, I, I look at this and I, I really like this a lot actually. That's why I made it. And it, it has to do with, friends, it has to do with how the ax feels in my hand. I, I like when I handle, I don't know, it just, if an ax head is too far forward, it's just personal stuff, friends. That's all it is. And this ax was made by me. So, but here's what I'm talking about. Look, down, down. What they say is optimal, optimal, or whoever made this up, maybe it was that Daniel Cook character, is that you put an ax like this and like this, and it should end up relatively, here, let's go this way so you can guys get a better look. In the middle of the bit, in the middle of, of the bit of the ax, well, this one actually kicks back a bit. So if anybody's wondering what that was, was talked about with Liam the other day, we put an Instagram up. That's all that was, is that we just kicked this ax forward a little bit. And you can see, see how it, it's just a little curvier. That's also split an ax, but I'll show you what that means in the wood. Okay, friends, we, my old man just showed up out of the blue in a fancy little car. But here's what I'm talking about with, with this, friends. Just so you understand where my mind is at. Um, it is a curvier handle. It's not outrageous by any means, but there is at the top here where it halves, you can, you'll notice it. It does just, just a little, but you can take more here to change that. That's all on who's halved in their axes. But here's what I'm saying about this. If you're a guy that splits wood on the ground, right? Actually, you're not going to notice in it, this in any way, but you, you will notice it. Um, so, there's an average piece of 15 inch piece of wood, 15, 16 inch piece of wood. You see how it encompasses the whole bit, friends? Like you can probably see it. It's using the whole bit. You're not hitting like, you know what I mean? Like that or like that. You're actually, because it kicks back a bit, friends. Do you know what I'm saying? It's strange, but it's, it's true. It kicks back a bit. So, it's good for guys who split on the ground, is what I'm saying. So, and it's great for guys who split on, on freaking chopping blocks too, because it just ain't gonna make a matter. It's just not gonna make a matter, look. So, it's just a sexy handle is what it is. That's it. Isn't that nice looking axe, Dad? It is a nice looking axe, I can't really split wood yet. I can with one hand. I was gonna say, how's that shoulder? Well, it's not ready. Yeah, it's, not not, ready. it's not ready, so, no. but I'm, I'm, I'm really, so this is my ax handle, friends. So, and we just got them and they're right behind you. And I'm going to show you something, a little something right there, right now. It's cold out, Dad. So, as you saw, we have that. But, but I'm going to tell you something, friends. See this, this big ball of fire in the sky? Uh, I, I'm not going, to, I'm not staying inside. I, I can't do it. But I, I want to share something with some, some folks in, in the ax community. Uh, our handles arrived. Um... This is the Buck and Billy Ray handmade handle. Uh, when, I, when I build a handle, I give kudos to whoever um, handles I used or ideas from anyone. Obviously, you guys know Jonesy. Jonesy's palm swells, I, I just love them. I don't know what it is. I exaggerate them. 
This is my dip here. His doesn't really have a lot of that, but I, I mean, friends, this is my world, right? This is what I do. So look, look at, look at the hand. Look what our hand does. See that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm nuts about this stuff. And there's a method behind my madness. And you see this, how the top of that axe handle goes out that way? Like how it, it's curvy, but it's not that curvy, friends. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'll go grab one of our most popular, well-known axe. Uh, I want to show you something. The C30, you, you see what's going on here, friends? The C30 is a wonderful pattern. It is. It's a glorious, glorious pattern. I love it. You can see the difference already, can't you? They've got, their hook is further up the handle than mine. It's kind of, it's beautiful. I've, I praise the C30. But if you look at, well, how can I do this so that you guys will see? Well, there's the difference right there. See their belly? There's the axe handles, completely right side by side. There. And let me just get that on square right there. Okay. If you think my handle's curvy, look at this one. Look at the C30. Look underneath my handle, friends. Look at C30's belly. Can you guys see that? Friends, my backbone is straight. My curve is up there. And actually, this makes me very happy because I love the C30. Friends, this might help here too. If we go like this. I'm longer than the C30. I'm about a half inch longer. But but this gives folks an idea of, of what you're looking at with my handle. Okay? It's a it's a compilation of Jonesy, Whiskey River. Um, oh gosh, it's been so long. I'm so far out of the loop, but you can see the difference there. You see my handle's got the big grab is at the back. My 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 actuant is at the back. I've got funny words, I know, friends. See, see, at the bottom, the palm swell. See the curve in the C30. But what's important is the lay of the the lay of the hang, is what I'm talking about. And what I mean by that is, because because uh, friends, me and Liam just went through this, and and because it's not really a, it is a specialty handle, the wood bullet handle, but it. it it's got to be worldly. It's going everywhere for, for everybody that's looking for a wood splitting axe. Whereas I'm selling these handles, friends. Like I, I just got, it's expensive to get them here because they're coming from the States. So uh, Eli does a great job. But of course, when you, you get into the freaking, uh, what do you call it? Uh, customs and, and, and handling and broker fees and You don't want to know. Anyway, here is Buckins handle. There's no kerf in it, friends. It's kerfless. I didn't put a kerf in it. I, I don't, I'm not going to put a kerf in it, actually. I may start the kerf or I may not. Because everybody, I've hafted about 800 axes in my day. And whenever I get uh, uh, an axe handle, um, if it's got a kerf in it, great, but I always end up changing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whether I cut a little off or I do this. Or that. So I don't I don't even think I'll put a kerf in these handles, friends. I may not. You see that, friends? My backbone is quite straight. I wanted this to be a durable yet sexy little bit of curve, kind of an in-between handle. So I'm I'm really happy about this handle. I've always been happy about this handle. So uh, they came from uh, Eli, he's an Amish fella, and he does very nice work. There always is, with his handles, friends, because he does so many, there's always a little bit of, like if you look down, you'll see, see right there, a bit of sanding to be done. So there's enough girth here for you guys to do whatever, if you don't like the girth, but I am an oblong entity man. Here's another reason I wanna show you something. I love the C30, but I, I at times I found it to be just a little bit round for me. You see what I'm saying? Right? Like mine is mine is more oblong, friends. There's more girth. Okay? Because this was designed for a five-pound head. Four 
and a half to five and a half. You can put a six pounder on it if you want. I wanted this to be strong. So where you get strength is in oblongity. You've heard me say this word. You look at the C30, they look very similar in, in, in girth, but when you turn it, you see what I mean? I'm a little more oblong. That's all. So the reason I'm con, 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 um, showing it and comparing it to the C30 is because everybody knows about the C30. That's why. I'm quite excited. This is, this is, this is. Uh, Eli does amazing work, actually. Amazing work. But there's little warbles and warbles. That's why the girth is there. So that you guys can do your hafting. He seems to have a system where he leaves a little bit right there every time, friends. Right there, you can see it. So what I do is I come in here. And I go like this. I'll probably do it outside. I'll probably do a session outside. And I just turn on my old Sandunsky. And I have a look down the handle. Mark it. Oh, yeah. That's all I do. Baboomskis. That's the handle. That's it. They arrived. If, if, if that's what, that's, there it is. <laughs> that's the handle. Oh. Say hi to everybody, Pops. How's it going, guys? All right, there's this little fancy dancy car. He's getting a 7.3 worked on. So there's the ax. So so there's, there's what I'm talking about, friends. You see how, see how it kicks back just a little bit? You don't really notice it, but, right? That's what I was talking about with that axe. But guess what? It looks like an axe and it works like an axe. I just love the feel of that handle. And there's the curve in the backbone. You can see it there, friends. See, in the, in the backbone, this is the backbone right here. So that's where the curve is. But I've held it up against other handles. It's not extreme. I wanna show you friends something. We just, these boxes just got dropped off. We're doing, check this out, friends. There's one sticking out of the box. Let's pull it out. I'm kind of excited about this. Yeah. Oh, that happens to be a grade A handle right there. First handle that pops out of the box. Isn't that nice, friends? Right there, friends. That's that little bit. But if you think about it and look at it, it's quite a nice straight backbone. And then the curve is there. So which, in and if this was more forward, your bit would just be like that a little bit instead of like that. So we're talking half inch in that thing I showed you where you lay the ax straight, right? I'm excited. Anyway, we'll get into these handles. I'm just gonna say, you'll see the old man off here. Fire, I guess. Yeah, you got to keep that fire roasting. Do. Say bye to all your fans, Pop. Bye bye. It's interesting on this set of boots, friends. The uh, I'm so grateful to Nick's boots. Wow. Um, because this is the old upper, friends. You'll notice that the vamp is over top of the upper, and I think the reason for that on this rebuild or hybrid or whatever, because it's a nail down construction, right friends? This boot's nail down, it's not stitch out. It's not a, it's not a stitch out like that, which is what everybody does now. It, and, and this is a soft toe. See the difference? Just, just a, just a toe. Whereas this is the Celastic 
toe with a nail down construction, old school nail down, which I know I talked about this the other day, but I'm just super, super impressed and grateful again with Nix. Um, all these companies make good boots, friends. It's just, you know, I, again, can speak to Nix with the thumbs up approach. They've been so good to me. Thank you again, Nix. Um, but you'll notice a couple things I'll point out. Uh, because it's a rebuild, the vamp is over top of the upper, which normally you'll notice see here and and actually there's a couple things because and I think why that was is because these uppers they had already been stitched right they were built once so I don't know if that's common but they go over this with the vamp now whereas when they build a boot the vamp goes under the upper and the and the counter comes over top of all three or two is is, is what happens here where this is different this goes under which I don't know it's just a different way to do something, but I freaking like it a lot. These were cork boots, friends. These were actually cork boots. But I'm just so grateful. I got one little spot where I feel it, which is where I always kind of feel boots, and that's where they, they come together here, which will just take a couple of days, and we'll be off to the races. I am, uh, so I'm just wearing them in the house. Mm-hmm. And I'm, and I'm on my way out. So I'll be wearing these today, breaking them in. Friends, work hard. Be honest. Catch you on the next video. And don't forget to be kind. Goodbye.